Extending data frames refers to the process of merging a new data frame into an existing data frame within our workspace. So in many cases, we might collect some data, and then later down the line, we may collect some new data. So how do we merge these data together? We're going to talk a little bit about what that process might look like. So in this particular case, we have our SE process data frame, and we've already done the work to pre-process that data in previous videos. So let's say now that we've collected some new data. First, let's take a look at the structure of the two data frames. So what we see in our SE process data frame is that we have 150 observations across six variables, years participating, child age, instrument, and then item one, item two, and item three. In our new data frame, we've collected an additional 20 observations across nine variables. And we see some familiar variable names from the previous videos, in addition to some new variables. In particular, we see additional questions Q21, Q22, and Q23. Our goal in this particular example is to merge the SE new data frame into the SE process data frame based upon an equivalent column structure. So how do we define an equivalent column structure? First, both data frames need to contain the same amount of variables. Second, each variable across both data frames has to have the same name. And third, each variable across both data frames has to be in the same index position. So our first requirement of equivalent column structures is that both data frames contain the same number of variables across data frames. In this particular example, our SE process data frame has six variables and our SE new data frame has a total of nine variables. So here we do not have the same number of variables. The second requirement is that each variable across both data frames has to have the same name. So here we see that the names of both data frames don't match. And then last, each variable across both data frames have to have the same index position. If we take a look at both data frames, we see that the variables are in different positions. So in order to merge this data frame, we need to make sure that we meet each of those requirements. So first, in order to have the same amount of variables within both data frames, we need to remove three variables from the second data frame. So we can see here that Q21, Q22, and Q23 are not included within our SE process data frame. So therefore, let's remove those three. Let's store this in a new object. We'll call it SE new data processed. And in order to remove those three variables, we can use the within function. We'll identify the data frame that we're working on, which is SE new data. Then we'll use the remove function, and then we'll remove those last three variables. So Q21, Q22, and Q23. We'll run the code. And then we see in our data frame that we have a total of six variables for both our SE processed and SE new data processed data frames. So second, our data frames have to have the same names. So here we can use the names function to do that. Start with the names function, and then we'll pass in the data frame where we want to change the names. We use the get symbol. We'll use the concatenation function. And then here we'll simply list the names separated by commas. So Q9 is child age. Q30 is years participating. Q7 is instrument, and then Q16, Q17, and Q18 are item 1, item 2, and item 3 respectively. Now keeping in mind here that the names we're changing have to match the SE process data frame. So here they match. Let's run the code. And now we can check both data frames using the names function to see if they match. And so looking at this, we see that the names match. And the last thing we have to do here is change the order of the variables to make sure they match. So if you remember from previous videos to change the ordering, there are several methods we can use. Here, let's use an indexing procedure. So first, we're going to overwrite the new data frame that we're working on to make those changes. So let's pull up that object. We use the get symbol. Now we want to call on the data frame that we're making the changes to. So again, it's going to be the same object. We'll use indexing notation. Remember, anytime we use indexing, we always have to think X and then Y. X refers to the rows, Y refers to the columns. Here, we don't want to make any changes to the rows, so we're going to leave that blank. Here, we're going to use the concatenation function. Now, remember that we can specify the columns either using the position values or the names of the variables. So for this case, let's use the names of the variables. So the first variable that we want is years participating. The second variable is child age. The third variable is instrument, and then we want item one, item two, and then item three. Let's run that code. And then if we take a look at the structure again for both of them, we see that we have the same order of the variables. So again, to review, in both data frames, we have the same number of variables, the names of the variables match, and the order of the variables match. So now the one thing to note here, the difference between the two variables is that the atomic class types don't match. 
Now, if you remember from previous videos, we did all of the pre-processing on the SE process data frame. Here we have the same variables, so we can use pretty much the same code. So to make this a little bit easier to see, I'm just gonna clear this out. I'm gonna give us some space here. I'm gonna paste the code. So I pasted this code from the previous script files. And what I did was I just changed the SE process data frame to the SE new process data frame. And what I'll do is I'll just run through this code. So to start, we changed years participating to an ordered factor vector. We used the string R package to remove years old from the child age variable. We then changed it to a numeric variable. We took our instrument variable and we changed it to a factor vector. And then we changed each of our item one, item two, and item three to an ordered factor vector. Let's clear this out. We'll take a look at the structure of both data frames now. SE processed. And then SE new data processed. And we see here that we have the same number of variables. The variables have the same name. The variables are in the same order. And all of the variables have the same atomic class types. Now, in order to merge these two data frames, we can use the rbind function. So let's merge these into a new data frame. We'll call it SE merged. We'll use the rbind function for row bind. And then we'll simply pass through our two data frames that we want to merge. SE processed and SE new data processed. We'll run the code. And now if we take a look at the structure, we'll see that we have the 170 observations across the six variables.